Think that you can just sit away in a corner and write code as a data analyst and make top dollar? Think again. What's up guys, Max here from Data Launchpad where we launch your data career into the stratosphere. On the channel so far, we've been through the top skills you need as a data analyst in your first year. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can take your data analyst career to the next level, really put it into second and third gear. Let's go. In my first year as a data analyst, most of the job was pumping out code, simple numbers and simple charts to be able to give my managers the data they needed to tell a story with data. In other words, while I was learning the fundamental technical skills, a lot of the higher level planning, strategy and thought rested with them. But that's just when you're finding your feet. As soon as you're able to nail the basics, you wanna be moving on to the skills that generate more value and that are rarer in the business because that's how you're gonna generate the most value for the company and here's why. It's just like having a product that's in very high demand but in low supply. The price of that product starts to go up. A lot of people have basic data handling skills. When you're writing SQL in your first year as a data analyst, you're kind of like a carpenter. The builder brings you in, you display some really cool, hard, specific technical skills, and then you go home for the day, your job is done. It's over to the builder to take the higher level of responsibility to solve the higher level, more valuable problem of actually building the house. And of course, it's the builder who's gonna to make top dollar. There's all sorts of people on the internet trying to sell you on massive salaries for data analysts. And little secret for you guys, not many first year salaries are that big. And data analysis is no exception. A first year data analyst might make something like 40,000 US dollars, which is fantastic for a first year, but it's under the median salary in the US uh, and not the type of salary that people are selling you on the internet. It's only once you reach those higher levels, when you've put in three to six years at extending your skill set, gaining the more rare and valuable skill set, that you're able to command a salary like $100,000 US and above. So if you want any chance of diving into a pool of money, Scrooge McDuck style, then you're gonna to need to put in the work now to extend your skill base. And of course, money aside, the other reason why you wanna be extending your skill set as an analyst is that you want to become a better person. You wanna take on more interesting challenges. You wanna have more of an impact at your company or in your career. So let's get into the top three skills for taking your data analysis career to the next level. Remember that this is an overview video and we're gonna have separate videos going into detail on each of these skills. But for now, let's take an overview. And we're gonna start with number one, problem solving. Now you could spend years sifting through all the data that your company collects, but that's not data analysis. You're not employed to find some interesting factoid that you can post on Reddit. You're employed to ask a specific question, to solve a specific problem. Maybe sales are down. Maybe customer feedback is bad this month. Maybe our products aren't being shipped fast enough. Now, I personally am sick to death of people telling me that I need to learn how to problem solve without it actually explaining how to do it. Now, this is an overview video, but I want to give you a little taste of what I'm talking about. Let's imagine that you work for Amazon.com. Now, I want you to imagine some fantasy world where Amazon sales are down for the year. Now it's your job to find out why. Now you could write down a laundry list of reasons why sales could be down and go away and investigate each particular reason. But how do you know that the reasons you've written aren't overlapping? And how do you know that you've captured all the reasons? You kind of just brainstormed and threw a bunch of reasons down. This is not a very powerful way of working out why sales are down and yet it's a very common way of thinking. It's a way of thinking that you want to leave behind you from this day forward. A different method of solving problems and one which is much more powerful and recognized as powerful in the business world is called issue trees. This is a technique that consists of breaking high level problems into an exhaustive set of more specific and distinct problems. We repeat this process until the original problem has been sliced into multiple sub problems that are much easier to manage and easier to investigate using data you start to be able to find out which high level areas are driving your problem. This type of methodological, rigorous problem solving technique that you can apply to any why question is absolutely necessary 
for you as a data analyst to start working more independently and take your career to the next level. So that's skill number one. And let's move on to skill number two, which is more advanced analytical concepts. As you face a growing range of problems in your career, you're going to need to develop a growing arsenal of statistical and analytical abilities. Here are some of the concepts that you're going to want to start learning quick. The first analytical technique that you need to understand is experiments. Now the business world is literally about improving products for customers. But how on earth are you going to know whether the change you've made to the product has actually improved things for the customers? What are you going to ask every single one? What if you've got 100,000 or a million or even more customers? You're going to need to conduct an experiment that tests how the change you've made to the product impacts customer behavior. Whether it's a beautiful randomized controlled trial or a quasi experiment, the bottom line is that when you're trying to understand how changes and improvements you're making to the product impact customers, you're going to be using experiments to find out. Another really important analytical technique is measurement. The ability to take some outcome, some desired outcome by the business and turn that into a measurable statistic that you can then track over time to understand how the business is performing against its goals. For example, monthly active users or MAUs is a metric or a measurement aimed at giving businesses a sense of how many customers are really using their products. The skill in measurement is being able to work out an appropriate way of translating that concept of customers using our products into a specific measurable event. In the case of MAUs, the devil is in the detail of how you define a you, a user. Is it when they log onto your platform? Or do they need to log on and spend 10 minutes on your platform? Or do they actually need to use certain functionality on the platform? The way this is measured is going to differ from business to business, that's not the point. The point is that as a data analyst, you need to understand really specifically how to translate those goals into very, very specific discrete metrics. Another skill is how to segment customers and understand Pareto distributions. This one is all about finding these small pockets of customers where the lion's share of value lies and being able to take advantage of that of course, across all your analyses, you need to start to learn to be careful of common fallacies and biases, the pitfalls that people typically fall into in their analyses that mean that the numbers they're presenting don't actually support the point that they're trying to make. This ranges from simple ones that you've heard before, like correlation does not equal causation, which by the way, even though you've heard it a million times, still is confused all the time in the business, all the time in the media, it is astounding. And ranging from those more commonly known ones to more nuanced ones like Simpsons Paradox, which is so fascinating, I'm gonna do a whole video on it separately. And the final skill that you need in your analytical toolkit is the skill and the habit of applying a financial lens to every finding and recommendation that you make. It's not really good enough to finish an analysis by telling your executive manager that, you're going to be able to improve MAUs by 10%. What does that actually mean for the bottom line? What does that actually mean for revenue and margin? You need to be able to calculate that this initiative is going to only give 10 to 15 grand per annum for the company, whereas this initiative is going to give upwards of 150 grand per annum or even more, and that it's that one that needs to be prioritized first. So that is the second set of skills that you need to be developing to really further your data analyst career. The third is being able to present data and your analysis to an audience better. Now this is really an extension of the skills that you learned in your first year as a data analyst. The skills of turning numbers that you've collected through your coding into simple charts that bring those numbers to life. You're not going to be able to present that chart over your shoulder at your desk to an executive manager. You've got to present to them in the form of a presentation to an audience. You have to bring those ideas to life in a way that is incredibly simple and clear so that your story really cuts through. These are people who are short on time, short on patience and short on attention. You need to make it super easy for them to walk away with the message. It needs to be blindingly obvious. So the trick is, how do you do that? Well, there's two elements to it. And the first one is the content. You need to make sure that your story is clear and concise. 
You make your story clear firstly by starting with the context, why you're even looking at this problem in the first place. And then you proceed to an argument, an argument that's made up of an overall high level point, and then various sub points that prove that point and evidence supporting each of those points. This is typically shown as a set of PowerPoint slides. On each slide, there is one point and there is one chart that is the supporting evidence for that point. Every single slide is in its place for a reason. Each follows the prior one and links to the next one in an overarching cohesive story that aims to prove your overall high level point. Basically, it's like a 10 out of 10 essay that you wrote at school. You also need to make sure that your evidence is watertight. People are going to be challenging your analysis throughout your presentation, politely to be able to understand whether it's true or not. And you need to be able to politely in your turn dismantle any objections that they have. So that's the content, but it's also really important how you deliver it. Now, I'm not saying that you need some sort of Martin Luther King-esque oratory abilities, but you do need to keep your audience <laughs> awake a strong expressive voice, eye contact around the room, gestures. All these elements of personal presence are going to help you bring your data to life. Imagine for a second when you succeed, that you manage to convince an executive manager to take on board your recommendations, recommendations that are going to improve business strategy, change a product to make it better for customers, potentially make hundreds of thousands of dollars for the company. That's gotta be pretty exciting. Couple of those and they'll be coming to you when it's time for promotion. You can put so much hard work into coding, into the analysis, but sometimes it just doesn't mean anything if you don't walk into that presentation for that half an hour that you have an executive manager's ear and just knock it out of the park. So that's it. Those are three skills that you need to kick your data analysis career into second and third gear. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not and make sure to subscribe to get all our future videos on how to grow your career.